Hello citizens, how is it going? Today I just want to talk about a couple of things and the first one I want to talk about is uh, Grealish. Um, it's something I touched on a little bit in the Man City Fallen Preview in the FA Cup uh, coming up this weekend. But I just want to talk about here as well and that is Paul Merson's column in Sky Sports. You know, he, he mentioned Grealish being cream. Um, he said that he's going to rise to the top eventually at City and show his quality and I think that's quite true. One of the things that I've mentioned quite a lot over the last few weeks in my match watch alongs and previews and things is that Grealish hasn't really shown his quality and I think that is also fair to say we did spend the 100 million pound on him and for 100 million pound you're not expecting you know so you need to develop over a few years you're expecting some sort of product and I'm not saying he's been all that bad he's had some really good performances don't forget he scored with his knee against Arsenal I think in the first home game of the season and he also scored a really good goal against Club Brugge I think it was in the Champions League so he has had some good moments for us and I don't think he has particularly bad games but one thing from our point of view is that for Villa, Grealish, you know, he was someone that Villa looked at when they needed a moment, when they needed to win the game. You know, when they needed something special in the 90th minute, they'd turn to Grealish to give him the ball and he'd carry it forward. He'd run at the defender and he'd win something. You know, and I always look back with Grealish um, to a moment he had for Villa when they were in the championship. I'm sure you all watched it, you know, when um, they're playing Birmingham and in the first half that fan runs on the pitch, punches him in the back of the head. Then in the second half, Grealish gets the only goal of the game. That's something that I want to see. I love that fight about him. And I want to see that more at City as well. But another thing that Merson said was that, you know, City, Grealish isn't going to get the ball much, which which is true. You know, we're not going to look at him when we need a winner in the 90th minute. You know, because we've got 11 other players, you know, that are going to do that. You know, even our keepers capable of creating something special in the 90th minute. So Grealish isn't going to get a chance to run in the defenders as much. He's not going to carry the ball as much. But, you know, he still needs to show us a little bit something. And I don't want to keep going over it and over it every week. But I just wanted to point out, because Merson did mention it, and he said that really 100 million pound price tag will be justified in the end. And next season, I think it will. You know, I think he's coming on. He just needs a little bit more time. Now, another thing I want to talk about as well is the, the transfer window. Now, the transfer window for us wasn't particularly great. I don't think we were shocking in it. You know, we, we signed Julian Alvarez. You know, a youngster from Brazil, he stays at River Plate on loan and he's coming to us next season. And I think, I'm hoping he plays really well for us next year. You know, like he, he ends up being a bit like uh, Jesus has been for us over the last few years. You know, young Brazilian striker. He reminds me a lot of Ferran Torres. He's got pace, got a bit of height to him. He can use his right and left foot. Look forward to seeing him next year. But one thing that did come out of the transfer window for us was Cancelo signing a new contract. And I think this went under the radar a little bit. Now, Cancelo signed a two-year extension, so he's going to be with us till 2027 at least. And I think that's fair. I think that's a good signing from us. Cancelo's been one of our best players this season, if not the best player for us this season. Whether he's on the left or on the right, he's been fantastic going forward. You know, he's got a wonderful range of passing with his right foot, the outside with his right. And don't forget against United as well, that by young goal was from a Cancelo cross on his left foot on the left-hand side. So he's got it all in him. I think he has had the most amount of shots any other City player this season, but obviously he's not in the top three or four go for goals, so he does need to score more with the chances he gets given, although most of his shots are from like 30 yards out, and even they're pretty good. He touches the ball a lot, and I think his work rate up and down the wing is really high, and I think what this signing does as well is that it shows that we're going to want him over the next five years, and I think as Walker gets older, we're going to need more cover for him, and Cancelo's going to be that cover, of course, and of course, he can just take over from him and play right or left hand side but we still need a left back and keeping Cancelo means that we can focus on a left back rather than try and replace him and I think it's a great little signing from us I, I do it shows it shows how hard he's put into him and I'm glad to see we're not going to try and offload him I know last summer there's talk about us trying to get rid of Bernardo Silva and now we're trying to give Bernardo Silva a new contract which again is right because Bernardo's been incredible this season for us he, he's always been good for us let's be honest and, you know, I was, I was a little surprised when we got Cancelo because if you remember, we had Danilo and we offloaded Danilo to Juventus and brought Cancelo in. And I was surprised at that because I don't think Danilo had a bad time with us. So C must see something really special in Cancelo. I mean, I'm sure we all do. But it's good to see. And like I said, with Bernardo, I think he's going to get a new contract soon. And there's rumours as well that we've opened up talks with Sterling again after he refused to sign for us because we weren't offering him the money he wanted. So things are looking up for us over the next couple of years as we and plays down for long-term contracts but in the summer we still need like I said we need a left back we probably need a defensive midfielder as well because I can't see Fernandinho lasting much longer and we do still need a striker we can't keep going on with our striker I mean our leading goal score is it on seven I think it's um Sterling and 
someone. I, I can't even remember. So we need to bring in these players and getting these players down on long-term contracts as well means that we can focus our efforts on these areas where we, you know, we can prioritize these areas rather than just replace players we've already got. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that as well. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about Kinsella's contract, what you think about Grealish. And make sure to hit the like and subscribe button because that's really going to help us with the algorithm as well. And if you can follow us on Twitter, that'd be nice. The Twitter link is in the bio. Just 9320 citizens. And yeah, I don't think I've got any followers on there at the moment, but it'd be really nice if you join in the conversation, send me a tweet or whatever. I'm sure I'll reply in a few days because I don't really tweet that much. I'm trying to. And um, like I said last week, I am going to hopefully do some live things soon. I am going to be doing a watch along for the Fulham game this weekend, so make sure to tune into that. And I'll see you there. Other than that, have a great week. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.